great day learners in today's video we are going to see some past paper questions from trigonometry and then functions yeah so directly we can uh, start solving the problems so the first question is we are going to prove the identity that is sin theta plus cos theta multiplied by 1 minus sin theta into cos theta is congruent to are identically equal to sin cube theta plus cos cube theta so this is what we are going to prove it mostly we'll be taking lhs and we'll prove it through rhs and here we are just going to multiply that uh, brackets expand the bracket so that you will get the right side value if you multiply sin theta into 1 and then sin theta into sin theta cos theta we are going to multiply so first step is sin theta into 1 is sin theta sin theta into sin theta cos theta is minus sin square theta into cos theta will get then the same way cos theta will be multiplying with these two so cos theta into 1 is going to be cos theta and cos theta into sin theta cos theta is cos square theta no this is also going to be negative cos square theta into sin theta will be getting what are we going to do here what substitution we can do at maximum uh, because if it is tan is there we can substitute that as sine by cos and we don't have anything else but one thing we can do one identity we can use it that is sine square and cos square we can replace and write as sine square as 1 minus cos square and cos square as 1 minus sine square so this is what we are going to substitute it and let's check what we are getting as answer so the first sine theta will remain as sine theta so sine square theta will become 1 minus cos square theta multiplied by cos theta then plus cos theta will remain as same cos theta cos square theta will be writing as 1 minus sine square theta into sine theta so now we will expand the bracket so where we are going to expand here and here if we expand it first sine theta will remain as sine theta and 1 into cos theta so this 1 into cos theta will give negative cos theta minus into minus is going to be plus cos square into cos will give cos cube theta then this plus cos theta will remain as same cos theta then minus 1 into sine theta is going to be sine theta then minus into minus plus sine square into sine is sine cube theta now we can cancel the terms so what we can cancel plus sine theta and minus sine theta can get cancelled plus cos theta and minus cos theta will get cancelled and then remaining things are sine cube theta plus cos cube theta actually that is what we need to prove it's here sine cube theta plus cos cube theta so from lhs we have started and that is equal to rhs we have proved it so next we are going to solve the second subdivision hence solve the question so whenever you have these type of questions you no need to confuse actually these three marks are going to be your gift Hence, solve the equation sin theta plus cos theta into 1 minus sin theta cos theta. So, mostly 99% the left side is going to be the same as the previous question that is this one sin theta in plus cos theta into 1 minus sin theta cos theta. So, for this, we have proved that is equal to sin cube plus cos cube. So, that's what the replacement that we are going to make it. So instead of this whole thing, we'll be replacing that by sine cube theta plus cos cube theta. And that is equal to whatever the right hand side value that they have given that we are going to write it. That is equal to 3 cos cube theta. Now we will be simplifying this. So that is sine cube theta is 3 cos cube theta minus plus cos theta will go there. I mean plus cos cube theta will go there minus cos cube. 3 cos cube minus cos cube is 2 cos cube so again we came to a point maybe we are we came to a corner then what we have to do further we can't apply anything here so we just have to think how are we going to solve this 
sin square maybe we can write that as 1 minus cos square cos square we can write as 1 minus sin square but we don't have anything else but you can check the both of them are having the same power so let's divide this so this is what you have to try whenever you are getting like this sin cube so this cos cube will come here this is going to be divided by cos cube is equals to 2 now we know that sin cube by cos cube is tan cube so tan cube theta equals 2 so one by one we are going to move and we'll find the theta value so first which one we can move not tan first cube is what less attached so tan theta is equal to cube root of 2 then if you want to find out theta that is nothing but tan inverse of cube root of so if you put this value in your calculator then you will get the uh, right answer so that is if we have two answers we are getting that is 51.6 is the answer rounded to the three significant figure then 231 so the next answer 231.6 how did we get that one answer is theta and the another one answer is 180 plus theta why am I writing in the degree because here the domain what they have given is degree so that better I can give my answer also in the degree suppose if you give your answer as radian not a big deal it's not a mistake it's okay but still whenever they have given a degree you also try to give your answer in degrees and for tan we know that it is satisfying in the first and third quadrant so first quadrant is theta the next one is 180 plus theta so one answer what you have got along with that you should add 180 so that you will get the second answer we'll go to the next question so f and g are defined by x belongs to r by so they have given f of x is 1 by 2 x minus 2 and 1 4 plus x minus 1 by 2 x square find the points of intersections of y equal to f of x and y equal to g of x which means whenever we have to find out the point of intersection we just have to equate the graph so 1 by 2 x minus 2 is equals 4 plus x minus x square by 2 so in both the sides we have two is in the denominator so to cancel it out we will multiply on the whole by 2 so x by 2 will become x 2 will become 4 that is equal to 4 will become 8 then this x will become 2x then this x square will become minus x square to make it into a proper equation let's bring this minus x square to the left side so it will be plus x square plus 2x will come here minus 2x and already one plus 2x is there plus x is there so minus 2x plus x then minus 8 minus 4 equals to 0 will be having it and if you simplify this equation we'll be getting x square minus x minus 12 equal to 0 after that so we need to factorize this equation so we'll be getting the two factors x minus 4 and x plus 3 equal to 0 so x is equal to positive 4 and negative 3 are the two answers we are getting but here they asked points of intersection which means you have to find out that y coordinate also so y coordinate you have to substitute 4 and minus 3 if you ask me where will i substitute i will be substituting in the function f because that is the linear one half of x minus 2 so half of x is 2 2 minus 2 is 0 then here half of x is 3 and i mean negative 3 by 2 minus 2 so negative 3 by 2 minus 2 gives 2 to set 4 minus 3 minus 4 minus 7 so minus 7 by 2 i will get it so the coordinates are 4 comma 0 and minus 3 comma negative 7 by 2 are the two coordinates okay so next find the set of values of x for which f of x greater than g of x previously we have equated the two graphs f of x equal to g of x we have taken and now they said f of x is greater than g of x which means instead of equal we should use greater than but we no need to continue the same step until this because we know it clearly what if even if i change that equal to as a greater than then i will be getting the same quadratic equation until this so what we have to do f of x should be greater than g of x which means x square minus x minus 12 equal to 0 instead of that i should put greater than 0 so this is the one that i have to use it actually 
because however if I do the same step only we will get so let me think like that and I know what are the two answers I will get so whenever you solve quadratic inequalities you just have to go to number line and plot the two points minus 3 and 4 check which region is going to satisfy uh, I have to take one value in this region in this region and in this region and they should satisfy that is greater than 0 but instead the shortcut is if it satisfies in the center it won't satisfy in the left and right suppose if it satisfies here then obviously it won't satisfy here and it will satisfy here that is a uh, one trick you can use it so any one side if you find that remaining all you can find it so i'm going to test it in the easiest way the in between minus 3 and 4 we have 0 so i'm going to take 0 in between value so if i substitute 0 here it's going to be 0 square and minus 0 minus 12 so totally it is going to be negative 12 and that gives as greater than 0 but this is absolutely not true it's just checking whether it is satisfying it is not satisfying so here it is not satisfied so in these two values it is satisfying we have got the set of values now it is this is the region it is satisfying that is x less than negative 3 because left side of that negative 3 so x less than negative 3 and the right side of the 4 that is nothing but x greater than 4 is what satisfying so now next we are going to find an expression for f g of x so f of g of x will write as same so that is the way actually finding that f g of x here they have given g of x is 4 plus x minus x square by 2 so 4 plus x minus x square divided by 2 is what we are going to give that as input for f of x and we'll check what is f of x is f of x is 1 by 2 x minus 2 which means what we have to do if x is the input input divide by 2 minus 2 so input divide by 2 what is the input here this is what the input so 4 means 4 by 2 x means x by 2 x square by 2 means already 2 is there so one more uh, 2 will add it so it's x square by 4 after dividing the input by 2 we have to subtract 2 also so 4 by 2 is 2 x by 2 will remain as same x by 2 and here this will remain as x square by 4 minus 2 plus 2 and minus 2 will get cancelled so we'll get the remaining thing as x by 2 minus x square divided by 4 that is what fg of x right so yeah we have solved it we'll move to the next one the function h is defined by h of x such that 4 plus x minus x square by 2 for x greater than or equal to k. Find the smallest value of k for which f h has an inverse. Actually, it is same as g function. So, whenever you have to find out the smallest value, so this is the thing that you have to find what you have to do. Uh, you have to write this in the completing square way. So, 4 plus x minus x square divided by 2 so if you are going to write this it in the completing square way first you will take the coefficient of x square as 1 so you will take negative 1 by 2 outside so what will happen this x square will be positive x square because negative have gone and positive two, I mean divided by 2 also have gone so it will become x square in the meantime plus x if you take negative outside so this will remain as minus and in x if you have taken 2 or divided by 2 so we should add a numerator 2 i mean we should multiply it by 2 then and it will get balanced so this is what the term will get it let's complete the process that is nothing but x square minus 2x so if this is 2 we should divide this x term by 2 so we'll add 1 square and we'll subtract 1 square actually that's what we'll do what is it the coefficient of x will divide by 2 that square will add and subtract after that we'll write these three terms as complete square because, because you can check it as a square minus 2ab plus b square it is in this format so these three terms you can write as x minus 1 the whole square and negative 1 by 2 remains outside then minus 1 square will be minus 1 then minus 1 into minus 1 by 2 because this 1 by 2 is common for this number also so minus 1 by 2 into minus 1 will be plus 1 by 2 and here we have 4 
so these two numbers can be merged but as of now you can uh, leave this because it's uh, not necessary to write it as a proper value because the objective is we have to find out this k value so when after writing the complete square i mean after writing it as a proper square one then that you should equate it with zero so x minus one you will equate it with zero no need to write that square also even if you write that is also will give the same answer like x minus one whole square you will equate it with zero that is nothing but x minus one equal to zero x equal to plus one so whatever the values we are getting it here that's what going to be the value of k so it's a trick just write it k equals one right so k equal to 1 is the answer that we have got for k so what you have to do whenever they ask the smallest value largest value of this when it has an inverse just write the function in the proper square method actually we did not complete it but still after writing it just take the square part alone and equate it with 0 whatever the answer you are getting for x that's what going to be the value here what they have given since they have given k you will write k equals 1 We'll go to the next one tan square theta minus 1 divided by tan square theta plus 1 in the form of a sine square theta plus b so this is what we are going to write so we know only one substitution we can do the tan square as sine square by cos square so sine square theta divided by cos square theta minus 1 whole divided by sine square theta by cos square theta plus 1 so here for sine and cos i will use s and c so that you will be able to understand it easily because if i write so much things and this handwriting is also very bad i know so you don't want to feel it bad so let me write this as s square and this as c square and what am i going to do here i'm going to take the lcm here so first s square by c square and the whole will be taking c square and this one will be if you cross multiply c square into one it's going to be minus c square the same thing will happen in the denominator but since we have plus we'll be getting s square plus c square whole divided by c square since that c square is in both the denominators we can cancel it out so what we will get to remain is s square minus c square whole divided by s square plus c square so what are we going to do in the proven one actually it should be only sine square no cos square is allowed so as usual the one and only weapon we are going to use it which means s square cos square we are going to write as 1 minus sin square so whole divided by s square plus cos square we will be writing as 1 minus sin square because we don't want cos square we want only sin square now you will expand the bracket s square minus 1 minus into minus plus s square whole divided by s square plus 1 minus 1 so this 2 will get cancelled so only uh, wait a minute so this s square and s square will get cancelled only 1 will remain in the denominator when you add s square and s square will get 2 s square so 2 s square minus 1 divided by 1 we can leave it so 2 s square is nothing but 2 sin square theta minus 1 and they gave a sin square theta plus b so easily by comparing this we can get to know a is equal to plus 2 and b is equal to negative 1 so this is what the answer you can yeah that's it we'll go to the next one hence or otherwise and showing all necessary working solve the equation so this is what you are going to solve so in the first question itself we have seen it already uh, whatever the thing that we have proved it here that's what we are going to use it for this we proved it as 2 sin square theta minus 1 equals 1 by 4 so minus 1 will go that side it will be plus 1 so 2 sin square theta is 1 plus 1 by 4 it is 5 by 4 so see 1 plus 1 by 4 it's 5 by 4 then next actually we should move that a uh, 2 to that side before moving the square so sin square is 5 by 8 then sin is plus or minus sorry plus or minus root of 5 by 8 because square will go that side plus or minus square root then theta is sin inverse of plus or minus root of 5 by 8 
so this is the value you have to put in your calculator if you put then you will get the answer let's see so we are getting the answer as negative 52.2 why negative 52.2 because you can clearly note down that what is the domain is or actually this function exists only between minus 32 0 so the answer also should be in between that um, so minus 90 degree to 0 degree is what possible which means this is the first quadrant then before that we have to go so the minus first quadrant we have to go so that answer is we are not getting in the positive root we are getting in the negative root this answer so this is what satisfying and that's the answer so the next subdivision is they have given two graphs and they are asking the diagram shows the graphs of y equal to sin x and y equal to 2 cos x so this is y equal to sin and this is 2 cos x in between minus pi to plus pi they have given the graphs intersects at the points a and b find the x coordinate of a is the first subdivision and we know whenever we are going to find out that intersection point we just have to equate the two things so first curve is sin x second curve is 2 cos x so what are we going to do as usual what we did before in the question sin cube by cos cube so sin and cos we have to bring it to the same side so sin x by cos x equals the existing value will be remains on the right side so sine by cos we know it is tan so tan x is equals to 2 then x is equals to tan inverse of 2 and we need to find out the answer in between minus pi to plus pi so x is equals to let's see what are the two answers that we are getting in the calculator okay so we are getting 1.11 as one answer then whether we have to go for that another answer no because clearly it is given the a point is in the first quadrant so only we have to get the first quadrant answer nothing else beyond that so that's it we should not take any other value if you give another answer then you might lose one more mark in this yeah so we have finished this x coordinate and find the y coordinate of b so that is also nothing but y coordinate at in the third quadrant we have it so what we have to do even there we have to equate the curve and find the value the same thing we did already here so we got one answer right so for another answer of tan we have to get what is the x value and that we have to substitute it for the y1 so what we will do for the y coordinate here so here we got for tan inverse of 2 we got some answer it is 1.107 we got so we have rounded that into 1.11 and now the another value is actually you should not go for 180 plus you should go in the reverse order which means normally what we will do we will add 180 with the ex existing answer but now actually you should subtract 180 so that you will go back so with the existing answer if you subtract by uh, 180 we are getting the answer as minus 2.034 we are getting but that is the x coordinate actually in the previous one I mean like the same previous one x coordinate if, if they have asked you can give the same answer but in this they are asking y coordinate so whatever the x value you have got for that you can apply sin x or else 2 cos x you can apply it so when we are applying that we are getting the y coordinate as minus 0 0.894 so this is the three significant figure answer i'm getting maybe if you are rounding this value to some other digits you might get some different answers too so that's it so how we did since they are asking that a and b coordinates first we equated the curve and we brought into a trigonometric equation we solved it only the first quadrant value you have to write because a is in the first quadrant the another one is in the third quadrant i mean the reverse third quadrant so that you have to subtract 180 from that then only from here to here you will reach it after getting the x value that you should put in the y equal to sin x or y equal to 2 cos x so that you will get this value so that's it so we have seen two trigonometric questions and equations and one function questions and it in it's totally 25 marks paper we have seen it
in the next video we'll see further if you have any doubts or if you want to know if you want to learn any specific topic that you can mention it in the comment and share this youtube channel with your friends so they can also get benefited thank you so much for watching we'll meet in the next video thank you dears